It says, for the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold upon me. Why do we sit on riches and yet we beg for help? Are we really Gentiles as told by the preachers? Or do they too have an agreement with lies? Why did Moshe marry an African? Why did Solomon date an African queen? Why was the Messiah taken into Africa to be hidden from the enemy? Can anyone tell me? Why did Job say that his skin was black? Why does the scripture say that black is beautiful? And yet all the biblical images we have show something totally different. Are we really Gentiles as told by the preachers? Why is it written then that the servants of the Most High shall come forth from Ethiopia? Why is it written that princes shall come out of Egypt and Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto the Most High? Why did our brethren go into slavery? Why did not the prophet see that? Or is someone lying to us? Why do we always blame witches? Do you want to know? Do you want to hear? Do you want to be free? The hour of restoration has come, as was prophesied by Ezekiel the prophet. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the dry bones representing the rejected people shall come and learn of their history. And the strength of the Almighty shall enter them, and they will begin to awake from slumber. Let us rise and build. Let us accept our mistakes and change. Let us stop watching the world and begin to read. For the time is now, and the hour of our restoration has come. Shalom, 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 dear people. We welcome you once again to the hour of restoration coming your way live each and every Shabbat morning from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. with a new topic weekly. And this week's topic is called Sabbath against the Sunday. Uh, so tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in because the hour of restoration is officially started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kozo Mambo all the way from South Africa. If you can catch us live, know that you can download the TuneIn app and search for High Radio and you will be able to listen to us as we speak.
just as we said many times before, know that during the show we like to interact. We like to hear your thoughts and your opinions. So if you have a question, contribution, know that you can drop that underneath the Facebook Live video or you can call in on 06577-14006. I repeat, 06577-14006. <laughs> Once again, we welcome you to the Hour of Restoration with this week's new topic called the Sabbath versus the Sunday. So tell a friend to tell a friend once again to tune in and know that you can follow us on Instagram, the Hour of Restoration. You can follow us on SoundCloud, the Hour of Restoration. And once again, tell a friend to tune in because after this song, we'll dive into the table talk that we have for today where we will discuss this topic that is really going on lately, the Sabbath versus the Sunday.
Once again, we welcome you to the Hour of Restoration, coming your way with this week's topic, once again called the Sabbath versus the Sunday. And know that if you have a question or contribution, we'd like you to drop it underneath the Facebook Live video so that we can try and discuss it during the Table Talk. And now, uh, the Table Talk is a segment where we invite uh, young men in our midst, young women in our midst, to discuss topics that really touch the youth, touch the churches nowadays. And once again, this week's topic is called the Sabbath versus the Sunday. So I have two brothers seated with me here. Um, I think you know them if you have watched them. If you haven't watched it, know that you can watch all the previous shows on Facebook, The Hour of Restoration, and or on SoundCloud, um, The Hour of Restoration. So I have Brother Randy on the left and Brother APC on the right. Um, fellas, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, <higher end. laughs> still alive, still alive, still, still alive. alive, still fighting the good fight, man. Mm, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, man. Me too. Me too. Surviving. So um, this week's uh, head notion, so the head question that we will try to answer is which day is the most holy day of the week, and uh, we'll try to break it down. I have a few questions concerning um, the Sabbath or the Sunday and how it, what it personally means for you. Um, so uh, without uh, further ado, um, many say that the Sabbath is the most holy day. Um, they say there is no day that is um, more important than the Sabbath. But many people would then ask the question, um, who even said or where is it written that there is a day which is holier than, than, than other days? Let's say, how do we even come to that conclusion that there is a day that is more important than the other days? Mm, that how you could answer that is it really reflects back into what you believe if you confess that you follow the word as it is written then you ought to um, yeah how do you say it research what the word is saying considering these things so when you read in the word that Elohim was talking about his special day his day his set apart day then uh -huh. you can read about that it's the Sabbath. So I can really make a real complicated answer about it, but it's just plain and simple. If you claim that you follow a word, follow a yeah, faith, and you follow everything that is written in the word, then you ought to yeah put yourself behind what is written then. But uh, when it comes to... Uh, worshiping on this 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 holy day um how come that nowadays uh we you, you call it the sabbath if i'm right yeah how come that then that people nowadays they, they worship on the sundays how come that mo ma most people especially when we look at the christian faith they say that sunday is the most holy day and this question i'll throw at apc how come that, that, that people nowadays go to church on a Sunday and we in the church, we never hear something about uh, the Sabbath? Uh, because the Bible says it clearly on the end of the times. Good is going to be bad. Can you speak in the mic, please? Yeah. Good. The Bible says on, on the end of times, the good is going to be bad and bad is going to be good. And, uh, to understand why they worship it, you, you must ask yourself, who brought it? So if I ask myself who brought it, can you give me the answer of who made or who turned it um, to, 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 to Sunday? Yeah, so you have to go ask yourself. Then you have to go to where does the calendars come from, where we have to keep, where they keep it. So then you, 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 you will have to go back to the Romans and the Greeks and you will find out that they just appointed that day to be an holy day. But according to Genesis 2 and uh, verse 2, it's not like that. But so does it mean that for you, uh, why, why, why is the Sabbath so, so, so set apart for you? Why, 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 is it, why does it make more impact on you than worshiping on any other day? Why do you especially like to point the Sabbath as a special day and, and the other days not as a relevant day or something like that. So what, what, what gives the value to the Sabbath for you? I, I, sim, I simply go back to the, uh, to the beginning, uh, Genesis 2, 
verse 2, the Bible names all days by number, but there is one day who they gave a name. And the Bible says, according to the Most High, He chose that day to be a day that you can take a break. And that's why I also, yeah, be, because if my Creator took a day off and He said that we have to do as He said, so that's who, what you do. Yeah, who, who are we to go against that? So, like, well, 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 many people then ask the question. Um, many people bash on on the fact that many have to keep the Sabbath, many have to to assemble on the Sabbath, but but is there a difference between uh, assembling on the Sabbath or going to the church on a Sunday? That that what, why what's the difference between those two days? Is there is there more anointing on the Sabbath or more miracles on the Sabbath or? Um, for me. I just look at it a simple way, you know. People are all trying to make things spiritual and yeah, Sunday is more anointing and we feel the Holy Spirit. I don't look at it that way. I look at it what is written and thus said Elohim. If he says that this is his Sabbath, this is his holy days, keep this as a set apart day, then that's enough for me, you know. I, who am I to argue with, with the Most High? Who am I to go and say, I know on Sunday is more anointing and this and that I, I've been going to church on Sunday my whole life and all that kind of stuff what, what, what's, what's the use of all that then you're saying that your tradition is above what Elohim is saying so for me it's a simple I don't know what it's for up APC you are you are definitely right it's, it's like you go to school and the master is teaching you one by one is two but you come and you can say my friends be teaching teaching me one by one is three so who are you going to follow the teacher or just the way what was taught onto you it's a, it's the same stuff but if you look at it i love it you love what sunday worship <laughs> no the shabbat day but not sunday because songs or sunday worship me i i definitely don't get it but but like when you say that the most high said that uh, the seventh day we have to take a break and we have to worship him on the seventh day which is which is the sabbath how come then um how come then that many people do not realize that 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 the seventh day is the sabbath what caused that change what that change caused is yeah those greeks and romans in the council of nicaea when they came together they they when they was persecuting the the uh, the how do you say the saints of the Most High? And then they came together and took over the whole land, and they um, they got together at a council. They named it Council of Nicaea, and then they made all kinds of rules and changes to bring all these religions together. And because they were all fighting amongst themselves, like they so were, this this was in the in the Roman Empire. Yes, yes. Then they the Great Babylon. Yeah, they tried to give everyone a piece of what what their religion is and what try to mingle it together then they said okay and then they started changing certain things like the sabbath day uh, switch it to sunday sunday worship so with with the time it also it became a tradition amongst people to worship instead of on the sabbath they were started to worship on a sunday and as it grow goes further further and further people kept seeing it as oh it's it's just it just belongs this way and then they started always going on um, worshiping on Sunday now instead of the Sabbath. So I think that this is really a point of research because you are naming something that w that took place in history. Yeah. So you're saying that 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 there was a council named the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea. So the listeners, it. if you haven't if you haven't heard it before, or if you you shouldn't take anything for granted. So no. if someone tells you something you haven't heard of it, don't just believe it. So he said the Council of Nicaea. Just Google it. It's just simple. Just when Google. you when you want to find something, you type it on Google. You don't have to believe me. You can just go and. And says, okay, let me just look it, look at it. So look it up, the it. Council of Nicaea, and he said that during the Council of Nicaea, I think there were several councils. Uh, they changed the Sabbath day, the worship day of the Hebrews, um, and they made it into Sunday. Yeah. So they made Sunday the day to worship. Yeah. Because uh, they also said in the word that they would change times and 
and seasons and so on. this also belongs onto that one they change the time and yeah. so we have we have a question from a sister uh and the sister says that now that now that you have established that that sabbath is the day to worship or sabbath is the holy day is it wrong or is it a sin to go to the church on sundays <laughs> a sin um i wouldn't say it's a sin because the the bible said you can you have to worship every elohim every day so worshiping on him on a sunday is not a sin because yeah you, you always need to worship him this you can always say yeah um if i'm worshiping on another day it's, it's i would say it's not a sin big but if you place the sabbath the sunday instead of the sabbath like you go with that mindset of, oh it's sunday oh I, I I won't go anywhere. Uh, I want to do this and this because it's, it's it's the most holy day of the week. Then then I do think it's him because you're replacing it in your mind, like it's the the Sunday is the Sabbath. But if you go and worship, you you keep the Sabbath, but you also go on church on Sunday to get something from the Word. Then you're you're edifying yourself, but you're not replacing the Sabbath for Sunday. So I wouldn't say that it, it's immediately sin to worship on the Sabbath on so, the on the Sunday. So that 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 simply means that okay. We let, primarily we ought to keep the Sabbath. Yeah. And after keeping the Sabbath, if we go to the church, maybe on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatsoever day, it is yeah. okay as long as we don't see that day as a replacement of the Sabbath. Exactly. So we cannot replace the Sabbath. I think that I'm, I'm, I agree with that. Um. Okay. Many people then say that uh, I've heard a lot, uh, especially concerning the Hebrew Israelites, and they say that. Um, would you say that assembling on the Sabbath day is 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 more important than assembling on any other day? If you get if you get what I mean. I don't get what you mean. So is it more imp like if you do not assemble on the Sabbath day? Yeah. But you do assemble on other days. Assemble to do what? No, like in the church, like in the church or whatsoever thing you do, do you think it is very important? Because you you just said it's not a sin. Yeah. So, why should I necessarily assemble on this Sabbath day? Do you think it's really that important to assemble on the Sabbath day if it's not a sin? I think Apoka wants to answer this question. <laughs> well, look, coming together is not a sin, you know, but it's just where your mindset is. Uh, Shabbat day is more than coming together. It's more about letting your soul come to a state that you can meditate and put your whole mind on the Most High. You you can do it also the other days, but because on Genesis to the Most High say, I have made this day holy, so you also got to keep it holy. Uh, because he has said that, that there is a special day, so we are to keep also that day. But to come together on all the days is not a sin. It's, it's good. And for those who do not know it, uh, the Messiah said, because they know it, there's, but that, uh, uh, and that is why they have a sin now. If they didn't know, mm -hmm. knew, knew it, they would have sinned. So those who go to the church and who do not know, know it, you cannot blame them. But those who know it, those who hear about it, but... They don't want to re research it. That is something else. Mm -hmm. But if you never, never heard about sin and about the Shabbat, you cannot blame that guy for me sinning or he's doing something evil. But it's just the mindset that we have brought on Sunday must be on set apart day. While if you buy on a, or on a calendar, you will see that Sunday is not the seventh day, but it's the first day. So. Mm -hmm. So now let's 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 get into what 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 the Sabbath means for you personally, and uh, that's exactly my first question. So you, I think you just 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 summarize what the Sabbath means. You you pointed out reflection, so uh, then I'll throw this one at at Randy. What does the Sabbath day actually mean for you? What what makes it so special for you for yourself? Uh, special. Uh, what makes it special for me? What makes it special for me is because when it's Sunday, I still have a day off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, what makes it special? <laughs> what a. Sh <laughs> no, what it makes it special for me is it's a day that you can 
it's it's truly a day that when you been working through the whole week how many things have been stressing your mind and when it's the sabbath you just longing for that special day that for in the first first thing is that Elohim it, it's a set apart day that he made to that was special unto him so i really delight in spending time with him on that day that he has declared so when you're when it's the sabbath day you, when you shut everything off you don't keep yourself busy with all kinds of things then it's it's really it, it really i don't want to sound spiritual or something but it really brings a satisfaction in me right, that i'm keeping that commandment that he placed in in his word and that you're fulfilling the things that he is asking from you and spending time with him in prayer in worshiping in listening to 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 worship songs it it really brings you to rest from all the stress that you go through to the whole week when you're working so it really brings a yeah how do you say it uh yeah i don't want to sound spiritual but it really brings a blessing onto me <laughs> Um, APC, I think Randy just just uh, mentioned a few things of how he of what he uh, what the, what the things are that he does on the Sabbath day. He mentioned worship, prayer, and uh, then the question is to you: uh, what 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 do you spend your Sabbath doing? Like, if I would like, like if I heard this message and I said, okay, the Sabbath day is true and I have to keep it. Um, is there a blueprint or a guideline that I should keep uh, while following the Sabbath? Yeah, it always comes back to the Genesis part because six days the Most High, he was walking on creating everything. And on the second day, he took his time to look at his work, to look what he has done and what, and what he is about to do. So that is the kind of a blue, or no, sort of a blueprint that you have, that on the Sabbath day, you must take your time just to relax. And if you look now in this age that we live in, the Shabbat day keeps keeps you from going from going out, do some crazy stuff because everybody know Shabbat uh, Saturday is a day. It starts with Friday after you your job, man. Completely lose on that day. After you leave the building of your job on Friday with a big smile, you know, is it is down till sun Sunday morning. So. <laughs> For me, the Shabbat, it keeps you from doing a lot of evil and a lot of things that doesn't yeah, necessarily have to be done. It's just a day of meditation to think about life. Uh, I, just, I just received a question of mm. a certain uh, sister called Rainis. And she asked the question, um, is the Sabbath day only for the Hebrews? Because many people, especially also in the churches, they say that these laws concerning yeah. the Ten Commandments or these laws in the Old Testament, they are for the Hebrews. No. <laughs> so is the Sabbath only for the Hebrews or also for the people that converted to no. the on same the, beliefs? On Genesis 2, chapter 2, there were no Hebrews. There were oh. no he he Hebrews. Oh. Oh. When Elohim created, there, there were no, he no Abraham, no Moshe. Nothing. <laughs> you know. That I never, I never saw it like that. Never saw it like that. So that's the answer. Yeah, man, that's the answer. It is, it, it is a simple verse, but it's because our mindset has been trained to take it spiritual. But if you just look at it in a simple way, it was before everything. So, so the he, so the Sabbath is also for the people that that, that convert for every man and woman who breathes oxygen. They all have to remember who gave it to them, the oxygen, the, the power. And he, the one that gave it, say, take a break. That's it. And I would like to add, even if that's a focus part of the answer, but even mm. if you would ask, if it, is it only for the Hebrews? But when you read in the word that every laws that are written are also written to the one that joined themselves onto the Hebrews. So mm. if you're... Even if you're trying to get saved and you're following the ways of the uh, Hebrews, then you also ought to take on this law because the the word says if you're trying if you want to get saved, you need to join yourself onto the yeah the the child that's being saved. So when you join the household, you also have to join to the rules and apply the rules of the household onto your own life. I think the scripture also says that when when, when the Most High gives a law, 
he always mentioned that this was for the one that was born in the land and the stranger that sojourned yeah. in the land. Exactly. So then we can conclude and give the answer that the Sabbath is not only for the Hebrews, but for each and every person that believes in the words that are written in the scriptures. So then my next question is about the transition, your transition from, from, from uh, the Sunday. Let, let's first deal with, did you ever worship on the Sunday? Was there a period in your life where, where you did not know about the Sabbath? Yeah. Can you both say yes on that? Yeah, I am. Yeah, for a long time. The word says the devil goes around and he deceived the whole world. So who <laughs> am I to say that I wasn't deceived? So everybody yeah. got drunk of the cup of, you know what it is, man. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then let me ask this because I know many people that that when they started converting to to these beliefs and these principles. They got a lot of help from home, from the church, from friends, from other people. So then I'd like to ask this question first to APC. And then I'll ask the same question to Randy. But um, how was it? How, how was that transition? Did you face any, any uh, adversity from, from your friends, from your circle? To me... I was already messed up, so no one has some. Uh, what does that <laughs> nobody mean? Nobody could say something up. to me <laughs> during that time was hot, so no. But eventually, you're gonna feel it, especially when you have parents who raised you on a certain mindset, and now you find on some way outside of what they raised you. It's for them also not the first, the first thing that they are accepting or waiting to see. In the first stages, you have some things, parents, family, those deep, deep, deep Christians. But yeah, to me, it, it was like, wow, in the beginning is going to be a little bit itchy. But and then I think, man, I'm, I am a grown man. So I just do what I want. But so what can you say? <laughs> is that, was that what you said? <laughs> I'm a grown man. So what can you actually tell? Yeah. Me? No, because there is a point that you have to decide Be because it is all all about you and your soul you, you, you know and i was uh, there there was a moment that i was following what it was saying to me and i wanted to be the person you you know to have a good face but then the reality kicks in like no i have to choose for what i want to do and as a grown man i will do but if you are a minor and you live at your parents i'll suggest to use wisdom what does that mean to use to, to use wisdom because that's a really a statement that can get people thinking yeah. your wisdom might not be but my wisdom so. like you live in your house with your parents and they giving you head headache about you have to keep the shabbat and so you are not going to be like a real or no how can say rebel a rebel unto them you just Keep your Shabbat on your own. They don't have to know it. You can be on the Shabbat time, chilling in your room and meditating. And on Sunday, you go to the church. Oh, that's what you mean with keeping wisdom. So yeah. you keep, you keep, especially when you are a minor. So you yeah. keep always, you always keep your parents happy. That's, yeah. that's as far as you can. And so you, you can. keep, you keep the Sabbath on your own. If you can assemble, you assemble, but especially then join your parents to the church so that your parents will be happy with you. I think that's a, that's a valid answer. Uh, so, Randy, how was that transition for you? Did you did you get any adversity, any comments on the fact that you changed from the Sunday to to the Sabbath? Mm, yeah, just like no, yeah, just like Apoka said, um, the time that I came to the truth, I was already past that age, like. My parents couldn't really decide for me, uh, drag you to church and that kind of uh, stuff. Uh -huh. I didn't have to deal with all those things because, yeah, I wasn't, my household isn't set like that. But, um, I, how do you say it? Verbally, I really got into arguments with my mother because she's, yeah, she's really with certain things. So she was always arguing, yeah, you don't understand it. The Sabbath, it's spiritual. And the Messiah says he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And you know, all the kinds of answers they started giving. Because then you see that they don't have understanding. But that's when I, in the beginning of my faith, I mostly got into arguments regards to the, with the Sabbath. 
but I was always able to keep the Sabbath. So I'm Elohim thankful for that because not everybody is blessed with that freedom of keeping the Sabbath that way. Like my brother said, people are always being some kind of minors. They are being forced and dragged into certain things, and they are being persecuted in their own homes. So the, that's the way that I, that I had to deal with it. But the transition was, yeah, it was for me. It was yeah, kind of not really hard. So yeah. I have this question from this from the the sister Anise again. And she says, this is a really valid question because I think in all our homes, especially for the people that live with their parents, with family members, this is a question that really regards them. And she says that, um, how do you deal with family members celebrating unholy days? I still live with my parents and my mom wants me to spend Christmas together. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely not easy. It's not easy. How would you, how would you, how would you tackle that? No, celebrating like Christmas, you, if you live with your moms and they're giving you a headache, just, you know for yourself what you can do and what you cannot do. Like, if you live in, in a house, they have a Christmas party and you go on your own chilling in your room, you asking for a lot, a lot of heat. Just go sit there with, 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 with your family. But you know in yourself, you don't celebrate it. And don't eat those things that you ought not to eat. Some kind of that. Just so, because sometimes you can ask for a whole, on a lot of heat that is n not ne necessary. Like on those Christmas days. Uh -huh. Just be with them because... It's your family, but don't take it in your mind like you are celebrating it. Because if you live in a house and you lock yourself in a room while all your un uncles are there, your aunties who want to see you too, you're asking for a lot of heat. Just go there and if and if they ask you a question, just answer easy. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, it, it also depends on the fact that if you are, I think you just mentioned a good thing. You said that when it comes to the, the adversity, when it came to when you changed to the Sabbath, a big part of, of, of the adversity was the fact that you was old enough and you didn't live at your parents' house anymore. So I think that uh, if you live at your parents' house, you are under the rules and regulations of your parents and they, they, they actually force you to, or they want you to spend time with that. As the brother said, uh, you can you can avoid the heat. You can avoid uh, the troubles, the problems, by by remembering the fact that this is not the day of the Most High, but just doing what is necessary to keep your parents uh, happy without sin. Uh, so that that would be a valid answer. But how do you deal with it, actually? How do I deal with it? I still live with my parents. Mm -hmm. um, I still I I deal with the same thing as this, as the sister said. So. When it comes to those holidays, uh, when I can get out of the house uh, to assemble with someone or to go to another place, I do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can work on that day, I work to, to escape that. But if I'm in the house, I just, I just sit down quietly and I'm with my family. But I realize what is what and the origin of the feast and all that things. I realize it. But when it's time for me to get out or when I'm old enough to move out or when I have my old ap own apartment, then I have to make other decisions. But how it is right now, mm -hmm. that's how I have to deal with it. And I think that if uh, the sister I niece is in the same situation, I think that would be a good way to deal with it. Uh, maybe the preacher will touch on it, but we'll wait on that. But that's the answer for now. Uh, and to continue to um, the question we did not finish yet, it was about that transition mode. We spoke about uh, the verbal uh, adversity, but how is that mental kind of thing? Because I think that when I started to keep the Sabbath, uh, it really changes the way you look at your whole week. Mm -hmm. It changes the way you look at every day. Uh, it, it it makes you look forward to yeah, that right, Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. So when it's Monday, you're already sometimes you're already thinking about the Sabbath. Yeah. So I would like to know how is that how is that 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 mental transition for you guys? That mental transition for me, just like you said, um, when your week starts again, you always want 
always think about the the whole burdens that are going to come to you in in the, in that week so when i'm going to work and dealing with all kinds of things that life throws at you you always try to to me at least i i'm always trying to keep myself steady and i was long for the sabbath to come if i'm sometimes i sit at work for, ah it would be sabbath already like people are saying ah i wish it was weekend ah, i wish it was this i'm sitting there at work in myself ah, i wish the sabbath was coming i wish that the sabbath was here so yeah it, it really like you said it's really a day that i long to that's that's a day when i truly find rest and it it adds another bonus for me because when it's the sabbath you keep the rest and then sunday comes and then you still have free <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it is sunday free but the uh, apc <laughs> What 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 is that for you like? How how did you see that difference in your mental state when you started keeping the Sabbath? Uh, it's like what the brother said. I have not much to add on it, but it's just like that. You think about the next day, the next week. Yeah, it's all about meditation and uh, yeah. To me, it was you know, very good stuff be, uh, because it help it help. It helps me from doing a whole, holding me from uh, doing a whole lot of unnecessary stuff, and that's why I kind of like it. So let's go to this last uh, question that I have. It, it regards uh, the teachers, or the shepherds, how you can, or the pastors, how you can call them nowadays. Um, how would you go about the fact uh, if you are a pastor, you have been worshiping on the Sunday, let's for many years, and then you come to the truth, uh, and that is that the Sabbath is the set-apart day of the Most High. Uh, how would you go about that as a teacher, as a, as a pastor? Can you imagine you have been worshiping on Sunday for 10 years, 20 years, and then someone comes to tell you that you mm -hmm. have to keep the Sabbath? It first starts with, like the word says, the fruits of your faith. So it first start that you need to humble yourself down we all need to humble ourselves down so when you as a leader have an attitude like ah i'm the pastor here i've studied the word for so many what come what do you come and tell me it it already goes wrong with you as a believer i would be honest so you need to humble yourself down and need to sit down and come down from the high place where you have put yourself and come and read things as it is written don't start arguing just sit down and conversate with the person that's bringing you this truth so then you need ought to read the things for yourself in context and then you, need, you really need to ask yourself and humble yourself and be honest with yourself that the day that the traditions or the things that you that were taught unto you that you are keeping is it truly what is written in the word of elohim the faith that you are proclaiming to confess that's the only thing that i have to say concerning these teachers and pastors APC, do you have anything to add to, to how, how a pastor or a teacher should go about that situation? Because I, I personally think it's, 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 it's a hard thing to do because many people fear the people more than they fear the Most High. Uh, that is one sad thing. Uh, people fear themselves more than the Most High. It's enough for all those pastors and teachers what I could say to them is just that they ought to do more research and it's like what the brother they say humble themselves to actually look outside of the box because most of them they have a sort kind of box that it has been taught onto them and they uh -huh. want to bring it to the others to the next generation but if you tell them do you are you willing to look a little bit outside of the box and start to ask some questions. Why, why this, why the Shabbat, why the word say that we ought to keep it holy? Why, why the Messiah say, I did, I did not come to take away the law, but to do it. So it's just about questions. Just be willing, be true to yourself to start ask some questions. And from there off, you can go on. And to summarize this, this, this table talk, I think there are some key things that were said. 
And that was, uh, first of all, the, ask, the question that the sister uh, Renice asked was, uh, we concluded that the Sabbath is not only for the Hebrews. So if you believe in the Most High that is described, that is shown in your Bible, in your scriptures, know that the Sabbath is also for you. And another key thing that, that, that the brother Randy said was that uh, if you want to understand how the transition was, was, was being made or what switched the, the Sabbath to Sunday worship, uh, research the Council of Nicaea. Uh, there are so many, so many doc documentaries even about, about the Sabbath. So they say that in this day and age, if you choose to, if you are ignorant, it's a choice. You are not ignorant because nobody taught you because it is a choice. Everything is to be found. Uh, the Bible even says that they were changing times and seasons. This is one of them, as the brother said. And another key thing that the brother APC said was, the Sabbath is all about meditation. It's all about reflection. That's what you do when you take a rest. You sit down, you reflect, okay, how was my week? Uh, what did I do wrong? What can I improve? And then you move on to the next week. Um, I think it's easy to to fall in that, that state of the Sabbath that you don't even do any reflect because you think it's only rest, 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 chill and hang out. But it's also really a day to reflect, to sit down, speak to the Most High. And this was also the end of this week's Table Talk, the Sabbath versus the Sunday. This is really a topic that you have to research. This is a topic that you have to study for yourself. Sit down and it will most definitely draw you nigh to the most high so once again tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in because we have come to the end of the table talk but after these songs we'll dive into the words the preaching that we have for today once again the topic is the sabbath versus the sunday we see you after these songs shalom mm.
once again, we say that we like to uh, interact with you guys. We like to speak with you guys. We thank the ones that just ask questions during the table talk. And we say if you have a question, contribution, uh, notion, you agree or disagree, uh, call in on 0657714006. I repeat, 0657714006. Or you can drop your comment, question, contribution underneath the Facebook Live video, and we'll do our best to touch it. After this song, we'll dive into the preaching that we have for today. <music> the name of the wonderful one we bless the name of the all-knowing one we bless the name of the all-powerful one we bless the name of the omnipotent for potency is derived from him we bless the name of the ancient of days because he's not a respecter of time and we bless the name of the rock of ages before we understood he was and after we understand he will still be his glorious name ought to be magnified forever the bible says that shama israel or hear ye israel uh -huh. yahuwah your elohim not the elohim of the heathens mm -hmm. But the Elohim of Israel or Israel, the light bearers of Elohim, your Yahuwah, even your Allahim, he is but one. Amen. We continue to affirm that there are not three gods, neither is there something like a Godhead, Godhead. as we have learned in Bible schools. But we believe in one. Triple G. 
one and one who shares his glory with none other yeah. even our father the maker the establisher of the heavens and of the earth and all that is in it we can never thank him enough for the opportunity to speak the opportunity to be alive and this wonderful day that he has given unto us as a day of rest as a day of reflection uh, once again you are listening to our of restoration and the mandate has been given to brother jeff yet once again uh, to share a little insight to share a little word little something we bless the brothers that went before us i'm slightly discomfited in my spirit because they have touched everything but it's a good thing you know the truth is but one last week i was speaking to my brothers and sisters and i said that there are but few things that stand the test of time and one of those things is truth so it doesn't matter whose mouth produced the truth uh -huh. as long as it is the truth it will stand the test of time and the bible says that we should all preach one word being constant in season and out of season, out of season. so whether it come forth out of my mouth whether it comes forth out of the mouth of randy whether it comes forth out of the mouth of apoka the most important thing is that the word has come forth and the bible says that he sent his forth his word and his word always has to accomplish that for which it was intended so we pray that your heart may be a fruitful ground in which the word of elohim may dwell the sabbath versus sunday not long ago i was in the continent of africa and as i was traveling through several countries wherever i would go like each and every 500 meters or each and every kilometer i would see billboards i would see churches and i was like wow what a wonderful thing on one side but wow what a terrible thing on the other side each and every church has its own doctrine each and every church has its own teaching each and every church has its own traditions and beliefs but the Bible says that there is but one doctrine, one there is truth. but one truth uh -huh. by which we must be saved. Uh -huh. That is why the Bible says that let the wheat and the tares grow together. The question we need to ask ourselves in these end times is, are we amongst the tares or are we amongst the wheat? Where are we standing in our walk with the Father? When you read the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19, the Bible says that in our fathers have inherited lies. Is there a possibility that you yourself have also inherited lies? It is, is there a possibility that the things that you de hold dear and you love and you like so dearly and you would swear by that they are false? Some people wake up on Sunday, tell their children, put on your suit. Now it is time for us to go to church. Others will wake up on the Saturday and say that as for us, this is the day of the Father. So this is the day that we worship. Yet we all call ourselves Christians. We all call ourselves believers. Even to the extent that we say that it doesn't even matter. That's why the other day I was listening to a minister and he said that time is an ally of deceit. Because we are so far from the reality of when the Bible took place. We now just take it anyhow and we make it fit ourselves. And as long as it fits us, we walk with it. We don't do any research. We don't study. But the Bible says that study to show yourself approved. What is the reason that tomorrow you will wake up and go to church? What is the reason that today you have woken up and gone to church? What is the reason why today you are listening to Hour of Restoration? Is there not a cause? Now, I don't know what the problem is with black people. Give me the book of Exodus, chapter 20. <clears throat> and people of the household of faith in general. Because we, if you want to know if the scriptures are real, just look at black people. If you want to know the scripture is real, just look at believers. Because everything that has been prophesied, everything that the Messiah or the Bible has said as pertaining to us, we are doing it. Give me verse 1 first. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Yah spake all these words. Now who spake all these words? Elohim. The Bible says that when he speaks, none of his words fall to the ground. Jump to verse 8. Verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day. Now what? Remember. Now what? Remember. No, it doesn't matter. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. 
Why would Elohim in his infinite wisdom tell us that we should remember? Because he knew and understand that we are a stiff-necked people. That we are people that want to be more spiritual than the words that are written. We are people that will forget. That is why he's saying that remember. Mr. Spirit. But as for us, we have forgotten. From Genesis to Revelation, you will hear Sabbath, 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 Sabbath. Nowadays, the Sabbath has even been removed out of the vocabulary of a lot of believers. So when you speak about Sabbath, it is something foreign to them. When you speak about Sabbath, they don't know what it is. But are we going to keep the doctrines of men or are we going to keep the doctrines of Elohim? The brothers said it wonderfully. There are so many arguments that people will give. There are so many reasons that people will give as to why they go to church on Sunday. And none of them can be truly underpinned in scripture. Yet people are doing it. So the Bible is saying that remember the Sabbath. To keep it holy. And to keep it holy. It is important that we remember it. And after remembering it. Because there are some people that remember it. And they acknowledge it as such. But they don't keep it holy. So he's saying that remember it and keep it holy. But as for our people, that is why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that my people, they do not consider. An ox knoweth his master, and a donkey knoweth his crib. But as for the people of Israel, we have forgotten our master. So the things that he calls holy, we call it unholy. The things that he calls set apart, we say that it is, it, it is not good. Remember the Sabbath. You know, yesterday night I was thinking about what I should speak because I've spoken about this topic for so many times and... 30 or 40 minutes is such a little time space to touch everything. So I pray that your willingness to study may be triggered this morning. That you will continue to dig deeper based on the words that I've given you. And that you will start, your, start to ask yourself critical questions when it comes to your faith. Because many of us, we don't ask critical questions. All that we are into is debating and argumenting. So as soon as we start to speak about the Sabbath, you have your arguments ready, but you don't even read the word. The brother was saying it wonderfully. Or the sister, I think a sister asked it. Let's deal with that. She said that a lot of people will say that the Sabbath is not for, for, for Christians, but the Sabbath is for Hebrews or for the Jews, right? No, she asked if the Sabbath is only for the Hebrews. That is what some say. Uh -huh. But the funny thing that people need to remember is that without Torah, there wasn't even a renewed covenant. So you can't take the new covenant and run with it without referring back to the Torah. And even in your so-called new covenant, doesn't the Messiah speak about the Sabbath the whole time? Doesn't Paul speak about the Messiah the whole time in the, in the, in the, in the discourse of Matthew in the discourse of Mark we hear Sabbath we hear uh -huh. Sabbath even in the book of Revelation it is spoken about Sabbath uh -huh. and now we are saying that it's not so give me the book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 16 <clears throat> we want to give you precept upon precept today is a teaching so take a pen take paper write it down that you may be able to compare and contrast what the Bible is saying with regards to the topics or the subject matter. Uh huh. Exodus chapter 30. 31. 31. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Yes. Wherefore. Wherefore. The children of Israel. Now he is not saying the Christians. But he is saying the children of Israel. Uh huh. Shall keep the Sabbath. Shall do what? Shall keep the shall Sabbath. Shall keep the Sabbath. Proceed. To observe the Sabbath. To observe the Sabbath. Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. For a perpetual covenant. For it shall be a perpetual covenant. It shall be an everlasting covenant. Now one thing we need to understand is that when you say that you are a Christian. You need to understand that if you are truly one that follows the Messiah, you are willing to be encrafted into Israel. Because without Israel, there is no salvation. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1 that salvation is first to the what? To the Yahudin or to the Jew and then to the Greek. So if it is saying that the Jews ought to keep the commandment or ought to keep the Sabbath as a perpetual covenant, as a perpetual sign. Is it not then a likelihood that the people that join the Jewish faith, the people that join the Hebrew faith, that they also need to keep the Sabbath? 
No, we are in the renewed covenant. Spiritual and as for Hebrew. us, they did that. Give me Isaiah 56. We are going to deal with all these arguments and we'll give you scripture for everything. We don't speak about and I felt and I dreamt and no, 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 no. Nobody has time for that. If you dream, keep your dreams to yourself. We don't fall, we just stand up. That's right. Just like Ezekiel did. Amen. Isaiah 56 verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse 1. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Thus saith Yah Elohim. Now, this is what the Father is saying yet once again. Thus saith Yah Elohim, keep ye judgment. Keep ye judgment. And do justice. And do justice. For my salvation is near to come. For my salvation it is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. And my righteousness to be revealed. Proceed. Verse 2. Blessed is the man that though it is. Uh-huh. And the son of man that laid hold on it. And the son of man that laid hold of what? Proceed. That, that keep it a Sabbath. That does what? That keep it a Sabbath. So he's saying that blessed is the man and the son of man and the preacher and the one that says that I'm a shepherd that keeps the Sabbath. Proceed. From polluting it. From polluting it. And keep it his hand. And keep it at hand. From doing any evil. From doing any evil. Proceed. Verse 3, mm -hmm. neither let the son of the stranger. Neither let the son of who? Of the stranger. The brothers touched on it already. So he's referring to the sons. He's referring to the son of men. Now he's telling us the strangers. Don't you know that Gentiles are also strangers? So if you are saying that you are Gentile, now he's referring to you. That as for you, stranger, as for you that says he is a Christian, as for you that says that as for me, I'm not doing anything with the law. I'm renewed by Jesus Christ. He's saying that as for you, hey, stranger, come and hear this. Neither let the son of the stranger that had joined himself to Yahuwah speak, saying, You have joined yourself by believing in the Messiah, saying, Yahuwah had utterly separated me from his people. As for us, we are separated. As for us, we Keep another day. As for us, these things are not important. Neither let the eunuch say. Jump to the next verse. Verse 4. Uh -huh. For thus saith Yahuwah uh -huh. unto, unto the eunuchs mm -hmm. that keep my Sabbaths. Verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Even unto them will I give in mine house. Uh -huh. And within my walls a place and a name. Uh -huh. Better than of the sons and of daughters. Mm -hmm. I will give them an everlasting name. Uh -huh. That shall not be cut off. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Uh -huh. Also the sons of the stranger. Now also the sons of the strangers. Mm -hmm. After that you have kept the Sabbath. After that you have been truly encrafted. After that. You know as I'm speaking. I'm just thinking about how we often say that. The Ten Commandments were written by the finger of Yahuwah. In the book of Exodus 31. Now, if you take away, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Aren't you breaking the law? And James says that when you find fault in one, you have broken the oh. what? Entire law. Uh -huh. So this is a question that needs to start to resonate within you. Like, hey, do I keep the Sabbath? Do I know when the Sabbath is? Do I know how to keep the Sabbath? Because Elohim with his own finger wrote these on tables. And therefore, it is important that we keep it. But what is he saying? Proceed. Also, the sons of the stranger that, has, that joined themselves to Yahuwah uh -huh. to serve him uh -huh. and to love the name of Yahuwah, uh -huh. to be his servants, uh -huh. everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Everyone that keeps it and prevents himself or his soul from polluting it. And take it hold of my covenant. And take it hold of his covenant. Even them uh -huh. will I bring to my holy mountain. Will I bring to my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. You want to be joyful in the house of prayer. You want to to enter into the holy mountain of Elohim start obeying his will start obeying his commandment I'm not elevating the Sabbath above the other commandments but I'm mentioning it and I'm putting an emphasis on it because it's part of it we can say that we are worshiping Elohim in sincerity and in truth and that when he's referring to his laws we pick and choose all the laws that are beneficial to us we keep it and all the laws that are beneficial to him we don't so every law that is beneficial to Elohim, he knew that his people will forget. That is why he would say that, remember, I know that when the world and the winds and the tantrums of life come, you will forget it. But I'm telling you to remember. That is why he always deals with the remnant. That is why he always deals with the set apart people. Because a lot of people will forget. A lot of people will find reasons as to say that as for us, all days are alike. Isn't that what a lot of Christians say? Many people say what, that. What, what is the emphasis or what is the use of placing an mm. emphasis on the Sabbath? We worship every day. We worship. 
Ah, you know, when we are talking about such things, is it important that people view it in the right context? You know what type of verses that they like to use? When, when you study the, the, that verse in context, you, you are flabbergasted. Give me Romans chapter 14, verse 5. One of the verses that they will use that, ah, you know, you esteem the Sabbath. But as for us, you know, we are the temple of Elohim. So wherever we are, we are worshiping Elohim. Flabbergasted. What a deep statement. So when you're standing in a nightclub, you're worshiping Elohim? Really? Romans chapter 14, verse 5. The book of Romans mm -hmm. chapter 14, verse 5. Uh-huh. One man uh -huh. esteemed one day above another. One man would say that the Sabbath is more important than the other days. Uh -huh. Another uh -huh. esteemed every day alike. And another would say that as for me, all days are alike. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Was this talking about the Sabbath? Was this talking about the days? It was just a paraphrase in the context of eating meat and not eating meat. But people will say that, you know, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. If you truly believe that the seven days, the Sabbath, it is fine. But as for mm. us, our Jesus Christ, our Jehovah God, Jehovah he rose God. triumphantly on the Sunday. It, and because of that, the blood. Sunday My is the God. Christian Sabbath. It sounds deep. It sounds wonderful. But at times, the things that look wonderful, the things that sound wonderful, pierce it through to see whether it has substance pierce it through to see whether it has something of essence in it and you will see that it's a look ballon empty it is empty that is what we see a what a wonderful statement but where in the bible will you see that the messiah or one of the apostles transferred the first day to the week over the sabbath where would they say that as for us the Jews or the Yahudins, they worshipped on the Sabbath. So now that you are a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, a follower of the Messiah, you I, are worshipping on the first day of the week. Where do we see that? I have this question from a brother. Uh -huh. And he says, but what day is the Sabbath? Isn't it on the Sunday? Because I think that when he looks to the calendar, uh -huh. the seventh day of the week, according to this calendar, is the Sunday. Very good question. For me to answer that, I want to look at what the people are saying in the churches and what a lot of people are saying. Uh, I brought, uh, give me the, um, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary mm. and we'll look at the word Sabbath. And afterwards, we'll look at the Lord's Day to have an understanding on which day the Sabbath actually is. Zondervan Bible Dictionary. You can Google it. You will see it. That's right. Buy but it. Buy it. Use it. That's right. The Abuse Bible says it. that buy wisdom and sell it not. Uh -huh. Stop buying Balenciagas or whatever. Hey. What the shock. invest in books also. Hey. Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Sabbath. Read it for me, sister. Yes. The following extract is from the Bible Dictionary, Zondervan. Mm -hmm. And it says the Sabbath. Uh -huh. The weekly day... Mm -hmm. The weekly day of rest and worship of the Jews. No, so it is a weekly day of worship for the Yahudins. Uh -huh. The Sabbath was instituted at creation. So it was not created by man. It was instituted by who? By Yah at creation. Proceed. The story of creation, uh -huh. as written in Genesis verse, um, chapter 1, yes. closes with an account of God's Halloween of the seventh day, mm -hmm. because on it, mm -hmm. he rested from his creation, uh, creative labors. So as Apoka said, it was the seventh day that Yahuwah Elohim, he rested from all his labors. <clears throat> but now it's going to say something fascinating about Christians and about how Christians view the Sabbath. The early Christians. Now the early Christians. Most of whom were Jews. Most of whom were Jews. Kept the seventh day. Kept the seventh day. As a Sabbath. As the Sabbath. But since the resurrection of their Lord. Since the what? The resurrection of their since Lord. Since the resurrection of their master. Uh huh. Was the most blessed day in their lives. Was the most blessed day in their life. Pause there. So now people are saying that Jesus Christ, he rose what? On a Sunday. And not on the Sabbath. And because of that, the Sunday has become what? The most blessed day of their lives. So they are making a distinction between the Sabbath and Sunday. Or the first day of the week. So it means that whenever people say that Sunday has become the Sabbath, it's already false. But our Bible schools are teaching us this. 
that's why it's good to read these books. But a lot of people, when these books, when they are reading such books, uh-huh. they are just being informed. They are not being enlightened. So you read it as it is. Oh, Jesus Christ, he woke up on Sunday. So now Sunday has become the most blessed week. When you proceed in reading, it will tell us that they did away with Sabbath worship and they moved it to what Sunday worship because Sunday was the most blessed day of the week. Mm. But one of you, most of you, if you have a calendar at home, what you will see is that the week does not start with Monday. The week starts with Sunday. So then if the week starts with Sunday and Sunday is the first day of the week, what will be the seventh day of the week? Saturday, of course. Saturday. I do have another question of the same brother. Uh-huh. And he says that to add, I think, on his first question, he said, first what first was, uh, what is the Sabbath day? And then he said, didn't the Ruach HaKodesh, or how he wrote it, the Holy Ghost fall on a Sunday? I do not really see the color, correlation, but... I know what he's talking about. Give me the book of... Thank you. We'll switch it up. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 1. Amen. This is what we like, you know. The Bible says that many are the devices in a man's heart, but it's the will of the Father which shall prevail. We can come and prepare messages, uh-huh. but we are here to edify the people. We are here to mm. uh, interact with you. So if you have a question or contribution, the floors are open. Mm-hmm. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Or oh, give me verse 9. Start from verse 9. Verse 9. Uh-huh. I, John... Uh-huh. Who also am your brother. I, Yahukana, I'm also your brother. And companion in tribulation. Companion in tribulation. So there is a tribulation that man must pass through. Uh huh. And in the kingdom. And in the kingdom. And patience of Yahushua patience Mashiach. Of the Messiah. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. Now he was in Patmos. When was he in Patmos? Proceed. For the word of Elohim Uh and for the testimony of the Messiah, Uh I was in the spirit. Now he was in the spirit. The question of the brother Uh of Yahuwah's day. What? On Yahuwah's day. He was. Give me the verse again, please. Verse 10. Uh I repeat. I was in the spirit. Now he was in the spirit on Yahuwah's day, on the Lord's day or on the master's day. On the master's day. Now, when a lot of us read this scripture. Our mind goes to Sunday. Why? Because of what we read in the Sondervan Bible. Because Jesus Christ rose on Sunday. Now, first of all, who told you that Jesus Christ rose on a Sunday? Eh? I'm not here to break down doctrines and to break down your philosophies, but I'm here to speak the truth. Because when you calculate these things back, you will see that your so-called Messiah, he could have never risen on a what? Su- on a Sunday. Uh-huh. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 that the sign of Jonah who uh, was 3 days and 3, three nights, nights in the sh- in the in the in the what? Belly in, of the whale. In the belly of the whale. Or the midst of the earth. I would guess. be the same sign that the Messiah will go through. Uh, now if the Messiah died on Good Friday evening or afternoon. Uh-huh. And you move to Saturday. Is that not one day? One day. And from Saturday to Sunday, is that not two days? Two days. So then how did the Messiah rise on a Sunday for you to tell us that Sunday is the Lord's day? Ah, does the Bible lie? Is the Bible lying? Did the Messiah, he was in the grave for two and a half days and I was like, you know what? The heat is too much. Too much pressure. The heat is too much. (laughs) The pressure is too much. I need to leave. I will resurrect anyway. Yeah. But if that which he prophesied did not stand, it would make him a false prophet. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he was without sin, even in death. Mm -hmm. So if the Messiah was without sin, that would have mean that he must have stayed in the grave for For three three days days. and three nights. And according to the prophecy of Daniel also. According to the... Thank you. Give me that. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. (laughs) Three days and three nights. We will establish when the Messiah was born. And that will exactly give you an answer as to when the Master's Day is. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. Uh-huh. And he shall confirm. Now who shall confirm? He's prophesying about the Messiah. Uh huh. The covenant. The covenant. With many in, for one week. For one week. For in the midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice uh-huh. and oblation to cease. To cease. And for the overspreading of abominations. Now in the midst of the week, 
you will cause it to cease. Now, if you take a week, we have spoken about this before, but hey, to those that are listening for the first time, if you take a week, a week has seven days. Mm -hmm. If you divide a week by seven, uh, if you divide seven by two, what do you get? Three and a half. Three and a half, but we are not talking in halves. So if you want to divide it rightly, you will divide three on one side, three on the other side, and then you will have what? One One in in the the middle. Uh So if we are dividing a week into what? Into, uh, 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 Into two. Into two. Or in the midst of the week, when would be the midst of the week? On which day would you have three forward and three backwards and still have one week? Hmm. Sunday, I already established, was the first day of the week. Uh Monday, Mm -hmm. the second day of the week. Uh Tuesday, the third day of the week. Mm -hmm. Then Wednesday can be considered the middle of the week. Uh Because then you will have Thursday, Friday, and and Sabbath. Sabbath. So Uh three on each side. So if he would have died on Wednesday and would have stayed in the grave for three days and three nights, that would have meant that he would have woken on what? The The Sabbath. Sabbath. Uh The midst of the week. The midst of the week. So your whole conception with regards to the resurrection of the Messiah is false. We are so blinded that simple counting we can't. Calculator. So when John is saying that he was in the spirit on the master's day, is he referring to Sunday, your so-called worship day of worship or he's referring to the seventh day of the week when you study the renewed covenant how many times did you see the people the select people worshiping on a sunday and on the instances that they worshiped on a sunday was it transferred over or was it preferred over the sabbath or was it just as a point of reference you see when we read stuff we need to read it without a lens. Many of us, we read it with the doctrine that we have had from our churches in our mind. So as soon as you read in the scripture, oh, they met at the first day of the week. You see, they met at the first day of the week. So Sunday has now become our day of worship. It's just like saying that our restoration meets on the Thursday. And on Thursday, Brother Randy shared the word. Does that now mean that Thursday has replaced the Sabbath? Surely not. But our people have been brainwashed. Now, the Bible says that at the mouth of two witnesses, let all things let all things be what? Established. Give me the book of Isaiah, the first prophet, 58. To see whether the Sabbath is the day of the master or whether the Sunday is the day of the master. Uh-huh. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58. 58, verse 11. Verse 11. Hmm. And Yahuwah mm-hmm. shall guide thee. And who shall guide thee? Yahuwah uh-huh. shall guide thee continually uh-huh. and satisfy thy soul uh-huh. in drought uh-huh. and, make, and make fat thy bones. Uh-huh. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. So he is giving us prophecy. Elohim will be with you. Elohim will do you good. As we hear in the churches, he's going to bless you. Your bonds will overflow. But now listen to what he is saying in verse 13. Verse 13. Uh-huh. If thou turn away thy foot from now, the Sabbath. Now if we turn away our foot from the Sabbath. If we now say that there is a new the Lord's day instituted. If there is a new day which is more important than the day that Elohim said remember. What will he do? From doing thy pleasure on my holy day. For then we will do our pleasure on his holy day. Uh-huh. And when it becomes Sunday. We will do the so called pleasures and services of Elohim. Whose holy day is it? My holy day. So he is saying that he is his, it is his holy day. So if it is his holy day, wouldn't that be called the master's day? So then if Jehukana was saying that I was in the spirit on the master's day, and the master is saying that Sabbath is his day, My holy his day. holy day, then on which day was Jehukana in the spirit? On the Sabbath, of course. You see, we, we read these things, but we don't let them enter. That's why I'm saying that it seems like we are being informed, but we're not enlightened. So we are being trained what to be puppies. Place. We are being trained to be, to, 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 to be dolls. We are being trained to be preachers that just brabble and speak mysteries. But our mysteries are shallow as hell. So I said that at the mouth of two, let it be established. So Isaiah has said it, that it is Elohim's holy day. Let's look at the prophet. If you doubted each and every prophet on the earth, as for this prophet, you cannot doubt him. Give me the book of Mark chapter 2 verse 27 to see what the Messiah himself said with regards to the Sabbath. 
And afterwards, we'll go into the history. <clears throat> For those of you that are asking about how are you going and well, where is the background information? Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And he said unto them, uh -huh. The Sabbath was made for man. Now, the Messiah is speaking. And to those of you that say that, what does it matter? You see, we worship Elohim every day. But it's not every day that is a day of rest unto us. So Elohim in his infinite wisdom gave us a day that we can detoxify, that we can disconnect from the rudiments of this world and be linked back unto him. That is why it's called a day of rest. So it is true that we worship Elohim every day and we must worship him Elohim every day. But it's not every day that we have a day of rest. It's not every day that we can come together, worship Elohim. We can come together to reflect on him. We can come together to stand hours and pray. So he's saying that what? The Sabbath uh -huh. was made for man. It was made for men as a gift. It was made for men as a blessing. Uh huh. And not man for the Sabbath. And not the man for the Sabbath. The people that are running with these Sabbath doctrines that have made Sabbath their Alpha and the Omega. Omega. He said that we were not created for the Sabbath. So you can go around preaching Sabbath, 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 Sabbath. And if you forget all the other laws, then what is the use of it? I know a church, they are so deep. Their name includes Sabbath, their name includes the seven day. Yet the same. Ten commandments that said that you will not make any images of things that are above or things that are beneath, they break it. So then what is the essence of you highlighting or esteeming that day? Informed, but not enlightened. Proceed. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh -huh. the Son of Man uh -huh. is master also now, of the Sabbath. The Son of Man, he is also the master of the Sabbath. Why is the Son of Man the master of the Sabbath? Because it is his Father's day. You see, precept upon precept, line upon line, confirming that which is written. But we won't understand. Why? Because there's a conspiracy. We won't understand because they want us to derail us from our purpose. And that is to come back to Elohim. And that's why I was saying that time, it is the ally of deceit. It is time that has broken us. It is time that we do not have that is preventing us from seeing the glory of Elohim the way we ought to do it so that we might obtain and keep the commandments and the laws of Elohim. So to those of you that are asking, but how will you then still believe in the Bible? And why is it then the seventh day? And how can it be that all the churches, all the anointed preachers of the kingdom and of the gospel, uh -huh. they speak about Sunday. It's, it's just like the name of the Messiah that people discussed a few weeks ago. A lot of these preachers know, but they don't speak about it. The same with the Sabbath. They know. But if they change it, it's a wait. Mm. If they change it, a lot of people will stop. If they change it, no more time. Saturday is the way. Give me the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse, <clears throat> I believe, 24. You see, we are going with Babylon's system. You see, Babylon loves it when you don't do anything on sunday because that benefits them but when it comes to the sabbath they want to keep you busy uh -huh. occupied oh saturday is the day for football oh saturday is the day for shopping oh saturday is the day for this is the day for that is there not a reason is there not a cause and how come we have fallen so far from where our people the forefathers of our faith knew that the seventh day was the sabbath or the saturday was the sabbath and now we have come into Sunday worship. It is a question. Daniel chapter uh, 7, sorry. The book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Verse th 23. Thus he said. Now this is what he is saying. The fourth beast. Uh -huh, the fourth beast. Shall be the fourth kingdom shall upon earth. Shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. And out of this beast. Uh -huh. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. It shall be different from all kingdoms. And shall devour. <clears throat> and shall devour many. In the whole earth. Uh -huh. And shall tread it down. Uh -huh. And break it in, in pieces. Uh -huh. Verse twenty four. Uh -huh. And the ten horse out of his out of this kingdom uh -huh. are ten kings uh -huh. that shall arise. Uh -huh. And another shall rise after them. And another shall arise after <clears throat> them. Listen. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall be diverse from the first. Why? 
He will pass through the root of religion. Proceed. And he shall subdue three kings. And he shall subdue three kings. Verse 25. Uh -huh. And he shall speak great words. And he shall speak great words and weary the saints. Against the Most High. Against the Most High. And shall wear out. And shall wear out. The saints of the Most High. And the saints of the Most High. And think to change times. And he will think to do what? To, cha to change times. And to do what? And laws. And laws. You can pause there. This is what the brothers have been speaking about. Prophecy. To those of you that love prophecy. The Bible says and that they were think to change times and laws. Mm -hmm. What you need to understand is that if you want to gain and have dominion over a people, you need to break away or you need to break their belief system. So in order for the Romans to have dominion mm -hmm. over the Jews, what did they do? They break their belief system. Mm -hmm. They break the laws that we have of Elohim. Isn't it funny that the Sabbath or remember the Sabbath when you study the Ten Commandments is the only law that pertains to both time and law and the Bible is saying that they will seek to do what change times and laws so what you will see is that the Roman Catholic Church the Roman Catholic institutions and the very um, fundament of these churches is what changed our times and our laws mm -hmm. is what changed what we believed in that changed the days have changed the names of the days, have changed the names of the months. But we thank Elohim that they could not touch the weekly cycle. So even though you cause us to go astray, even for them that love Elohim, they will continue to seek the truth. Mm. They would deceive the elect if it were possible. If it were possible, but it is not possible. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I was studying the months. And then Elohim started to teach me that, just look at the months, starting from month 7 which is uh oh sorry the months look at the months yeah so the last month is the 12th month is december then you have what november october you name it when you study the wordings of these months isn't it funny that september which start with sept mm -hmm. is seven oct october which stands for octopus with also an eight-footed animal eight november nueve nine December 10 but in our calendar it is the 12th month does it make sense mm, the root words the root word why they added months to it they added January they added February when you read the book of Exodus the Bible says that and this shall be the beginning of a year unto you why would our year and start with winter how does that make sense while well, the Bible says that and then towards March and April that will be the beginning of our year. So they have changed all these days mm. for us to be what? Distantiated from the Father. For us to forget who we are worshipping. To us to forget who we are following. But even when you go to other languages. The brother was saying it the other day. When you go into Italian. Sabato. Which mm. is Saturday. I'm not talking spiritual language. In their normal language. Abe say. Yip e language. Mm. Saturday is Sabato. No the same when you go to Portugal. Sabado. Mm. Saturday. But mm -hmm. as for us, we don't understand. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with Justice, and we were talking about African linguistics. And in the night, I couldn't sleep, and I was like, let me go further. In Chi, Sunday is called Mimininda. Mimininda. Which comes from the word Kwamininda. And Kwamininda means, Kwa refers to the creator. Mamin refers to um, Mamin being satisfied. Me is my, and day is day. So he's saying that the day in which Yahuwah Elohim was satisfied. Which day was that? Sa uh, Sabbath. You see, a lot of us don't understand these things. Why, why the truth is hidden in our own language. Why the truth is hidden in plain sight for us, but we can't see. Why? Because we are blurred. So you have the apostolic, you have the Pentecostals, saying that they are broken away from the Roman Catholic belief system. Yet what they believe is the exact same. What do you see in the Pentecostal, uh, Pentecostal household when they are transferring so-called or they are, um, um, uh, how do you call it? When they are um, anointing people into the household, when they are, what is it, ordaining ministers. Isn't it the same they do in the Roman Catholic Church? Mm. So you say that you have broken away from the beliefs of the Roman Catholic system, yet you still walk in that same thing. We are going all over the place, but it's for you to just have to, hey, he's making sense here. He's making sense here. I need to research this. I need to research that. 
Because how did we come to a point where Hebrew people, which are stiff naked, Hebrew people, which are, which are very stubborn, would succumb to the Romans, would succumb to another belief? There is a way, but a lot of people, a, a lot of us don't know. When you study history, we have spoken about this before. There's an emperor called Constantine. Now, he was a one that did not worship Elohim, but he worshipped sun deities. He worshipped Matras. He worshipped Apollos. He worshipped Sol Invictus. These are all suns and signs in the sky. Now, when he was worshipping these entities, he came to a point where he said that he had a vision and that his God told him that he should create a universal church. Now, note that the Roman Catholic Church is also known as the universal church. But one thing you need to understand is that you cannot break down a black man easily when the slave masters want to overcome us what did they have to do put us in chains uh -huh. put us in brackets so that we could not move the same with this empire he knew that the jews he knew that the gentiles which had just converted that they were on fire for the things of pertaining to the kingdom so he left them and he made an institution that as for us the gentiles who do not believe in this city sunday will become a day in which we all worship our creator in which we all worship the deities and leave those people that are so-called following the messiah to worship their sabbath but afterwards the the um the unbelievers under uh, sorry the jews understood and succumbed to the will of constantine how because he first instituted it for the unbelievers and then after 200 years he was like you know what now nah, man this needs to go on so as for you Jews also, come and join us on Sunday. Now we all worship one Elohim. We have a universal church. None of these things are being spoken in the churches. None of these things are being taught where you are going to. Why? They say it is not important. But Elohim said, remember. This is also one. Ah, thank you, brother. Give me the book of uh, Second Maccabees. It's been done away with exactly. That is why they take away the apocrypha from the scriptures. For you not to have an understanding and know which direction to go and know how scripture aligns. For people just to say that something you need to close the Bible and just pray. We all pray, but his word is him. So his answers are also found in the scriptures. So how did we come to a point whereby Hebrew people started consenting to the belief of Gentiles? Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 1. <clears throat> Reading from the Apocrypha. Second the, Maccabees the second six book of Maccabees. Yeah, chapter 6 verse, sorry. One. One. Not long after this king. Uh -huh. Not long after this, the king sent an old man uh -huh. of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers. The brothers have already spoken about the Council of Nicaea. I will add the Council of Orleans as well. Study these things to see what happened. Romans and Greeks making decisions about Jews' faith. How can you can make a council, you can make a round table, and you are going to talk about Torah, you are going to talk about the renewed covenant, and you are not <laughs> including the, the people. people. How? Mm, what, How? What the shock. Why? Because there's a conspiracy. Proceed. And not to live after the laws of Elohim. Uh -huh. Verse 2. Uh -huh. And to pollute also uh -huh. the temple in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And to call it the temple of Jupiter uh -huh. Olympias. To do what? To call it the temple of Jupiter Didn't Olympias. Didn't I say that, that these were the worship, these were the deities that uh, Constantine was worshipping? Mm -hmm. This is what they would do. Sunday, the day of the sun. The day of Olympias, the day of Jupiter, the day of Matras, the day of Sol Invictus. Hey. Sunday worship. Worshipping of the sun. When you read the book of Ezekiel, I believe chapter 8, the Bible says that and I stood in the kingdom of Elohim and I uh. turned my back and I saw that their back was turned to the things of Elohim. It's just like the people today. We turn our back from the Sabbath and what do we do? Sunday worship, oh, Sunday worship, oh, <laughs> Sunday worship, oh, Sunday. You can touch everything of a black man, but when it is Sunday morning and you hey. want to have a lay in, there is fire yeah, 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 in the house. Stop, shut down. You are the Antichrist embodied in the household. Doubling of your in the occults. You are doubling in the occults. What the shock. Not knowing that the Messiah, he also slept on Sunday, like, hey, Charlie. 
I'm tired. Vandaag eventjes uitslapen, man. <laughs> Extra dagje. Like the brother was saying. Let us not be over spiritual when the Bible is talking about these things. Give me around verse 7 or verse 6 where it speaks about the Sabbath. Verse 6. Mm-hmm. Still reading from 2 Maccabees chapter mm-hmm. 6. Mm-hmm. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. So they made it a law that it was not lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath day anymore. Or Asian feasts. Or Asian feasts. So what they will say that as for you guys, don't 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 look at Leviticus 23. Don't think about holy days. Uh, we have given you Sunday. Chill with it. Holy days. Did you have holy day? Holy days. You know what? We have made it holy days. Holy days. Billy, you know Billy Holiday? Holy day. Come and chill with us. We will combine it. And that is what we have gone into right now. So you have people talking about Christmas. You have people talking about Easter. All these things are not found in the Bible, but people keep it. And that is one of the main reasons why pastors do not speak about these things. Because when you start to touch the Sabbath, you need to touch Christmas. When you touch Christmas, Uh you need to touch Easter. When you touch Easter, you need to touch the name. When you touch the name, Uh you need to touch the law. When you touch the... ah, Go below effect. It, 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 it is way too much. And that is why I salute ministers that have the boldness to make this step. It is not an easy thing. But if you understand that you are a shepherd and the blind, if he leads the blind, they both fall into a ditch. You'll be like, it does not matter how many people stop this church. If I am truly called by Elohim and I have an understanding of this, it is time for me to preach it. But as for the preachers of now, too much it is, it, 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 it is it's about wearing suits it's about being called a pastor may the most high bless you and all these things but they do not think about the weightier matters of the law of the law all that they think about is themselves give me the book of ezekiel chapter 22 verse 25 should your mm. pastor preach about this should your pastor, if he knows it, can he say that, you know what, it doesn't really matter. These were things of the Torah. Now the Messiah is the master of the Sabbath. So it doesn't really matter. If it doesn't really matter, then why don't we come together on the Sabbath and leave Sunday out? <clears throat> I love one statement that Brother Justice used to make. He says that the mere fact that we all know that the fourth kingdom, which was broken down, and the Bible says that out of the little horn came forth. We all know that that is the Roman, Roman Empire. And the mere fact that the Roman Catholic Church keeps Sunday as their day of worship should already show you that there's something wrong with Sunday worship. But we don't study. But we don't consider. As for my people, we don't consider. We just take it. Why? We are worshiping one universal Elohim. Elohim knows our heart. Yeah, he knows your heart. And the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And the speaking of the mouth is an action. Let your action be like one that remembers the commandments and the laws of Elohim. Ezekiel 22. Verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25. Uh Uh-huh. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. Now, he is saying that there is a conspiracy amongst the prophets. There is a conspiracy among the Bible scholars. About the people that have started Bible schools. Proceed. Like a roaring lion. Uh Uh-huh. Like a roaring lion. Ravening the prey. Uh Uh-huh. They have devoured souls. They have devoured souls. Why have they devoured souls? Because you are teaching people to break the commandments. Proceed. They have taken the treasure uh-huh. and precious things. The precious things of Elohim, the commandment, the things that he said that remember, you have told the people forsake it. A precious things of Elohim. And what have they done with it? They have made her uh-huh. many widows uh-huh. in the midst thereof. Uh-huh. Verse 26. Uh-huh. Her priests have violated my law. Her what? Her priests. Her priests have done what? Violated my they law. They have violated my law. Proceed. And have profaned my holy things. And have profaned my holy things. What did they profane? They have put no difference. They have put no difference between a holy and an unholy thing. Between the holy and profane. Uh Neither have they shewed difference Uh between the unclean and the clean. Uh And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. Uh And And hid their eyes from what? from, uh, from From my Sabbaths. See, my all, Sabbath. All truth is parallel. Mm-hmm. He's saying that as for these preachers, 
They have omitted the weightier, thing, the weightier things and matters of the word. The more important things of the word. They have forgotten. The things about clean and unclean. They don't speak about it anymore. Because the blood of the lamb has sanctified. But he is also saying that now as for my Sabbath. They have done what? They have forsaken it and they have profaned it. This is what ministers ought to go back to. To that old faith that was handed to Paul. To that old faith that was even handed to our forefathers of the faith. But what are we busy with? We are speaking about Azusa. You what? see, I'm not trying to bring these things down. But you have been speaking about Azusa, Azusa, Azusa. Masa, your movement, can it be compared to Azusa? Azusa. Let's, let's stick with the weightier, weightier matters of the word. Let's bring people back to the word. Because the Bible says that righteousness does what? Exalt a nation. Mm -hmm. That is why the church cannot be exalted. That is why there is so confu much confusion in the church. Because the measuring stick in the church is no longer the word. The measuring stick in the church is politics. Spiritual. Churches, when the ministers are afraid to speak the truth. Mm. Whenever I read scriptures like this, I think about Jeremiah. You are the one that said that I'm called to the nations. Now before he equipped or he told Jeremiah that you are called to the nation. Do you know what he told him? He told him that I formed you in the belly or in the womb of your mother. And I've ordained you a prophet. Do not be afraid of their faces. But you are afraid. I've made your forehead hard so that it will bash through the doctrines of devils. Hey. But now we are afraid to speak the truth. Now we are afraid to speak about the Sabbath. So when brothers like us, simple brothers, we don't even touch lunar, we don't even touch solar calendars, mm. we don't even speak about weekly cycles, but we are just speaking it so that the layman will understand and do research. We have become antichrist. People are saying that don't listen to this brother. They are too radical. Now all the things that I gave unto you were out of the scripture. What else do you want to debate? What type of question do you want to ask? Paul said that they have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. I love the mindset that Christians have when it comes to Sunday. You can't play, play and mess around with Christians on Sunday. But the Bible is saying that transfer it to the day that he said that it is holy. Does that mean that it's a sinful thing for you to worship on Sunday? When you read the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 6, the Bible says and that they met on the first day of the week. The same does it say in the book of John chapter 20 verse 19. First day of the week, out of the fear of the Jews, they came together. So there is nothing wrong with fellowshipping on, when, um, on Sunday. But the problem is whereby we call Sunday the Sabbath. Whereby we call Sunday the seventh week. Why? Because we are confused. Why? Because we have been lied to. Why? Because the Roman Catholic Church has enforced it unto us and we are taking it blindly. Let these things sink in. Let these things start to resonate. Think and ponder upon these things. How does man ought to keep a Sabbath? Because there are people that have come to this truth, but they don't even know how to keep the Sabbath. Give me the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 16, I believe. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he came to Nazareth, uh -huh. where he had been brought up. Now, the Messiah came to Nazareth, for he was a Nazarene, and he was brought up there. Uh -huh. And as his custom was. Now, what was his custom? He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. You see, you always ask yourself the question, WWJD, what would Jesus do? The Bible says that it was his custom. To enter into a synagogue, to enter into a gathering of holies, to gather into an assembly on the Sabbath. The question is, what do you do on the Sabbath? You are sleeping, footballing, and doing all these things. But Elohim is telling us to come back unto him. He is the voice crying out in the wilderness, saying to his people that I know your pastors have fed you with this. But this is the truth. This is the narrow path. Walk on it so that you may have salvation for your soul. But your people say no. Give me the book of Isaiah 56 verse 1 in conclusion. The book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse 1. 
Thus saith Yah Elohim, mm -hmm. keep ye judgment uh -huh. and do justice. Uh -huh. For my salvation is near to come. My mm -hmm. salvation is near to come. And my righteousness uh -huh. to be revealed. Uh -huh. Blessed is the man that doeth this. Blessed is the man that doeth this. What is he referring to? And the son of man uh -huh. that lay it hold on it, uh -huh. that keep it the Sabbath. That does what? Keep it the Sabbath. That lays hold of it, that keeps it. Proceed. From polluting it. From polluting it. And keep it his hand. And keep it his hand. From doing any evil. From doing any evil. Proceed. Neither let the son of the stranger uh -huh. that had joined himself to Yahuwah speak, we saying. Have, we have re read this already. What I was looking for is that let not man think about his own will when it comes to the Sabbath. Think about your own salvation. Think about your personal savior. Think about the Messiah and the things that he means in your life. Set a day aside that you can rest and be like, I've read the Bible throughout the week, but now I'm going to read more. I'm going to reflect. You know, the big. I was speaking to Justice on Thursday, and I told him that the biggest problem that we face as believers is that we don't reflect. And that is why Elohim gave us the Sabbath, that despite how busy you claim you may be, take time and reflect because a person does that, that does not reflect does not know where he stands and if you don't know where you stand Masa, that's the end of you give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 I want to check out something at I think verse 5 and then we are out of here are there any questions or not anymore okay. not anymore Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Verse. Give me verse 5. Let's see. Okay, give me verse 1 and read it quickly. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. Uh -huh. who, is, who is as the wise man? Uh -huh. Who is wise? Nyansa, the wisdom of Yah. Proceed. And who knoweth uh -huh. the interpretation of a thing? Uh -huh. And a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, uh -huh. and the boldness of his of his face uh -huh. shall be changed. Proceed. Verse two. Uh -huh. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, uh -huh. and that in regard of the oath of of Elohim, uh -huh. be not hasty uh -huh. to go out of his sight. Uh -huh. Stand not in an evil thing, mm -hmm. for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Mm -hmm. Where the word of a king is. Mm -hmm. There is power. Mm -hmm. And who may say unto him, mm -hmm. What doest thou? Uh -huh. Whoso keepeth a commandment shall verse feel. Verse 5. Verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Shall fe fear or feel? Feel. Feel no evil thing. Whoso keepeth the commandment. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart. And a wise man's heart. Discerneth. Discerneth. Both. Both time, time and judgment. And judgment. Discern the times in which we are. Discern the times that have been given. Discern the times that have been called for worship for you. Discern the time of the Sabbath. And discern the judgment that is linked to it. When you read Exodus chapter 31, when you start from verse, I believe, 13. It says that the soul that worketh on the Sabbath shall be killed. That was the seriousness of Elohim with regards to the Sabbath. Does that mean that we should become overly righteous? The Messiah said in the book of Matthew chapter 12. That it is a good thing to do well on the Sabbath. So I pray that as we have highlighted both Sunday and Sabbath. That you will continue in your journey of searching the truth. And for those that know the truth kindly keep it shalom once again you are listening to the hour of restoration coming your way each and every week with a new topic this week's topic was called the sabbath versus the sunday know that you have to study study the council of nicaea study the council of orleans know that the sabbath is meant not only for the hebrews and uh, I add to that, if you missed any of the previous shows, any of the previous doctrines, know that you can follow us on SoundCloud, The Hour of Restoration, or on Facebook, The Hour of Restoration. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram, The Hour of Restoration. And we hope to see you again next week on the Shabbat morning from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. with a new topic. And with these words, we leave you once again. Shalom. Shalom.